Yeah, I've spoken to a lot of Jedis. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to a lot of Obi Wan Kenobi's. I've spoken to a lot of I've spoken to a lot of Yodas, right. which is which is the Grand Masters, right. the Godfathers, the gods of this. Right. And they said, "Look, you did what you had to do." And, 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 and it's and, love. And it's love. But that's because they're from New York. So they understand what this is. It's not violence. I have no ill feelings towards Royce. Don't let Royce fool you for one second in not knowing what it is, bro. He knows exactly what it is. Well, then, Rest listen. Rest piece to proof. He knows exactly what it is because that the, the battle scene in Detroit was cultivated. Yes. And all of them were a part but of it. But it still started from here. And at the end of the day, it's, it's respect for him. It's respect for everyone who, who, who decides they want to participate. But just know, we don't stop. It's hot for trap trapper turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf you heard. Yo, Jim, I need a bomb I could drop on you niggas. Bad boy, I'm never gonna stop for you niggas. I don't give a fuck who you got as the illest. I solidify my spot with the now All right, we back. My expert opinion, episode eighty-one. Eighty-one. So we're in the final quarter. I'm close, getting close to a hundred. It's a beautiful thing. Kobe, feeling good. Is everybody feeling good? Everybody feeling <laughs> yes. good. We here, we here. It was a trying day, and I know, know it was a trying day for a lot of people in here, but we still made it. We still made it, and that's what counts. All right, shout out to King Shaven, um, kingshavenproducts.com. King's Seduction. This is my favorite. This is my favorite. But it's a hard call because King's Elixir is dope too. So I would say just get both of them. Try it out, see which one you like. You might like both of them, like me. So, you know, that's a beautiful thing. Here you go, bro. Yeah. I would give you the king's seduction, but you're a married man, so I ain't trying to get you in trouble, bro, but it works. It works. Jen, <laughs> it works. It works. You know, you gotta All right. keep the wife's You Got to, you got to. All right, I got my man. Oh, man, what's going on right now? The Wraith, the Wraith is in the building, my man, Mickey Fax. This is probably like his thousandth time on the show. Smicky, what up, y'all? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My man, Mickey Fax, uh, we definitely going to get into that, you know, everything that's been going on with Lupe, Royce, and, and all the other members of Slaughterhouse. Um, my man, Sean Biggers is in the building, of course. My man Moody's in the building. Taylor Made, Taylor Made, Taylor Made. What's the site? TaylorMadeLifestyle.com. TaylorMadeLifestyle.com. I know y'all been seeing me rocking these. If you want to know where to get them, TaylorMadeLifestyle.com. Support the homies. You feel me? I got uh, I got my other half in the back. You know, she got the hat with the hopper on it, just in case you guys was confused. She's taking. She's taking. It is the stamp. Right. I got my man Fabian on. Yo. Um, you're gonna be seeing a lot of this guy. Like, if you if you're not familiar yet, he's one of those guys. Look out for Fabian. Dope music. Um, you and Mickey just shot something. I heard the record, fire, fire, fire. He's one of those guys. When I met him, he was on his way to, what was it, a, a Jack Thriller had an audition for rappers. Yeah, yeah, I stopped by, I gave a little speech, and I feel like he was the only one that heard me, because since then, I've seen him everywhere. You're gonna see more of him, so shout out to Fabian. He got the crew in the building. My man, Gat Murder in the building. Facts. Facts. Check out the Brooklyn Way web series. 
And I got somebody that's very, very special to me in the building. My life coach, the person that helped me turn everything <laughs> around. Sean Noel is in the building. She also has a, uh, the, you're promoting the 30 day. To a new you journal. 30 day to a new you journal. That's actually the process that I used on you. Yes. I now bottled it up and put it in a book. That's great. Yeah. See? See? And she's going to make millions because it works. Because <laughs> it works with me. It works with me. And we have my man, Peter Quellen, a.k.a. Kid Chocolate, former middleweight champ. The champ is in the building. In the building. Um, Yeah, clap it up. Clap it up. How's everybody's week been? Man, my week, my week has been like uh, one day at a time. One know, day at a time. Then, like I can't even remember what I did Monday. That's how my week been. Wow. So, like, I forgot it was Friday today. Do you remember what you did Tuesday? Uh, actually, I just came off a three-day flight fast. Mm. Uh, I checked into a room in um, Newark, and um, I fasted for like three days without no food. Just to like, you know, get my mind together. But that's yeah. what I, I'm just now coming off the fast right now. Right. So Liquid fast? Water. Or water? Yeah, water. I, I mean, I went, last September, I did 40 days water fast, but I, I included tea and I did, you know, shots of ginger. I like, I got a juicer at my home and I just like juice. But other than that, yeah, it's been like a, a good journey to be able to, you know, learn to fast. Yeah. Definitely. Especially this time of my life. I did a, I did a five day at the beginning of the year, five days. But I didn't, you know, I was drinking like uh, fruit, stuff like that, like you know, blending everything down, and I lost 15 pounds, and I felt great. I had an issue with my shoulder that was gone. There's a couple other things that I was doing, I felt wonderful. So you know, check into that fasting thing. I'm sure Shaw, you could give us a lot more information. I was just about to ask, do you fast with intentions? Like when you go on these fasts, right? I think the most important thing for me when I do my fast is I write out a whole, I create a list of intentions. Why am I fasting? Here's what my expectations when I get out of this fast. Here's what I want changed in my life. Here's what's wonderful in my life that I would like to remain. So I kind of go into the fast with an expectation of when this fast is over, here's where I want to be when this is all done. Right. Do you do that? Yeah, I think I, um, you know, a man with great faith, and yeah. um, you know, I'm, I'm always proving my faith is real by, you know, going drastic, doing stuff like it's like, you know, people that I have to go, I have to be big at whatever I do, so I can't, I'm not going to just fast for that. You know, yeah. I, I always try to get close to God, be close to God, but other yeah. than that, it's like. I'm always taking the opportunity to learn something new about myself. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. That's, that, that, yeah, fasting is a good... Health is a big thing, Thanks. man. Because I feel like... When I look around the room, I know that it's weird that a lot of people in here are at the age now where we have friends that's passing away yes. from health issues. People checking in the hospitals and not coming home and you're not seeing... Good God. <laughs> Bless you. Not you too, Space. Not you too, man. Yeah, but, you know, on a, on a serious note, it's very important that, you know, we take, yo, you, are, you okay? You okay? You all right? You know, you got to watch people not know. <laughs> I'm playing. But seriously, like, it's, we're, we're at that point. Mm -hmm. So I can't even imagine, like, you know, I, I understand, like, you know, eating healthy, and you know, working out and all that, but I can't imagine the type of discipline where I haven't achieved that yet. That went into, you know, your boxing career. You starting off from Grand Rapids, moving out here yep. to New York City, yep. going pro, and just just tell us about that journey. Well, you know, when I moved to New York, man, I, I had such a large story that I had to go back to moments and tell you like. This is what I was doing at this time. I lived in the Bronx. You know, my trainer kicked me out of his home. I didn't have nowhere to go. I was on a train, on a, on a, on a four train, 
going down to the Lower East Side, I wasn't sure where I was gonna live. I'm like, I'm not from here. I don't got no family here. Where I'm gonna go? Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I felt like God was had His hand over me, even though I've been in the roughest moments. I never really could ask nobody for nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't allowed to do that for myself. But like, I remember eating one slice of pizza a day. You know what I mean? All day. So when you say fasting, like fasting is just minor to what I already been through. I, I had to put myself through stuff, but like life itself put me through a lot. You know, right. saying I've been through a lot. So for me, it's like that's what makes the champion. You know, it's like his story, what what it took to get there, and you know, um, getting into that point. You know, I was like starving. My ribs is touching, and you know, I got to the point where uh, I got to be a world champion. And the bearer, when I, I I was living in Brooklyn before they built the Barclays, and I was like, oh, they putting this Fort Green. Yes. Fort Green yeah, Fort projects. Green, yes, Fort Green, man. I got a lot of love for Fort Green, man. It's like um, for me to be able to walk in the projects and not have no problems with nobody. You know, I was like, those are my brothers over there. So you know, I'm I'm blessed to be able to have like a you know a, a hood like that behind me, and I'm thankful to you know God had me on that journey while I'm able to touch and inspire and influence people. Right. But what 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 what's the training like? Like, what did you have to do a day to be in like what was the the championship edition training like? First way I started the mirror. I started in the mirror, and I always went to the mirror and I looked at myself and I said, "Who gonna value you more than you gonna value yourself?" Every morning. This is something you said. Every time I stepped in the step before I started the workout, and um, I never would answer the question because I felt like I was never be able to be valued by anybody because I always valued myself off of hard work, and hard work always pays off. Right. So you know that's that's what I'm. I guess. That was the exercise for me to be able to be the champion that I am is being a, looking yourself in the face and being okay with the person you see. I found out in my life not not a lot of people are okay with the person they see in the mirror. Right. So you know, um, me doing that as an exercise, you know, people like a therapist are like, "Yo, man, that's good that you did that." You know. What <laughs> yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. She had me doing stuff. Like yeah, yeah. Because we are we are our biggest enemy, believe yes, it or right. not. Well, yeah. that's the person. You had, that's, that's it. In the, in boxing. That's the person you actually fight. That's oh my gosh. So yeah. that's and battle person. rap is kind of the same, same way. Thing. Yes, I, I, wow. and I would assume in music, it's wow. kind of the same thing because it's the work that you put in, it's yes. what you get out of yes. it. Yes. And life. So who's gonna value you more than you gonna value yourself? Right. So she, yeah, she and had life. me every day looking in the mirror. The problem saying, is, I, love you. Pause. <laughs> I do. I train I kids you. in my neighborhood, and I find out asking that question right, hearing somebody else give the other person that they gonna. This is who valued me more than I, right. Uh, and I, hearing them answer that question for and not saying myself, it's kind of crazy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's what made me the champion that I am today. I right. walk around with champion in spirit everywhere. No bodyguard my whole career. Never had a bodyguard. Stayed in the cut like peroxide every right. time. You know what I'm saying? And been blessed to be able to be on this wonderful journey to meet interesting people. You know what I'm saying? I got to see a lot of evil. But I also got to be a part of a lot of evil. I also influence a lot of my friends into evil. But like, mm-hmm. I'm thankful that I'm able to, you know, inspire people that come from where I come from, which right. is nothing. All right. So you you're gonna keep the like the secret to yourself? No, I'm, I'm <laughs> saying that. You I'm know, trying to figure out what what the, was the your... secret. The secret yeah. is like going to the mirror and just knowing who you are. You know what I mean? Whatever you do, a lot of people, you know, um, got to go to the mirror and face the person they see, and that's the that's the first part of everything you do in life. Mm-hmm. Whether you're a rapper, whether you're a boxer, and me learning how to do that, like I said, is what, that's the secret to becoming a champion for me because not a lot of people are, and some people look at themselves and they lie, they, lie to themselves. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, like, you're going to answer that question, mm-hmm. but it can't be a lie either right. because you would get yourself believing in your own lie, and that's not cool either. So, I guess that's the secret. You know what I mean? Hard work is always going to pay off, but believing in yourself is the start of everything you do. I'm hearing self-awareness. He's saying the secret is becoming self-aware, knowing who you are, right. being absolutely honest with yourself because oftentimes that we are not, you know. The, the, the truth is if you could look in the mirror and, and tackle those emotions that you're feeling or whatever you did, you might have done something to someone that you yourself know wasn't right. right. But actually facing that, saying, who, who are you? Why did you do that? That wasn't nice. That was wrong. 
So actually figuring out who you are first, he's absolutely right, is the secret to life. I have a new thing that I just came up with. You're going to hear it here first. Okay. I'm going to ask you a oh, question. Exclusive. <laughs> exclusive. Let's <laughs> get it. I'm going to ask you a question that anyone could answer this. Mm -hmm. Who is the real MVP in your life? i say my mama. What would you say? i say Jesus Christ. Come back to me. I don't know. You don't know? Who would right. you say? Absolutely Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Jesus, yeah. Can Absolutely. we go around the room with this one? I'm curious. Oh, sure, okay. I say Jesus. I'm curious. Yeah, I say Jesus. Jen, you better. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> She's wearing a She's wearing a hop hat. She's wearing a hop hat. Right. I have to say God. The brain surgery is next to God. Right. He's still going around the room? I'm my mother. He said myself. Oh, man. The inner self. The inner self. Which is coupled with God. You have to be in tune with God. But to... when you, the inner self is different from the new self. The new self, the old self have to die first before you become aware in God. Yeah, because... but it's still inner. It's yeah. still new old. It's still inner you. So the real MVP, this is what he's talking about with self-awareness, with... Um, looking at yourself in the mirror with talking to yourself, giving yourself life, speaking life into everything. You are where you are right now because you believed where you were going and you saw yourself. You found yourself. You right. went deep within and said, who's Matt Hoffa? Right. That's why you're sitting in that seat right now. Right. So when I talk about the real MVP in your life, is first and foremost, everybody, you have to figure out who you are first before you could get to whatever destination you're trying to get to because you are the guiding light mm -hmm. to where you're going. And you believe in God. A, a lot of other people believe in other things, but I believe in God. So for me, when I pray, I'm praying for that guiding light, that inner self, that spirit that's going to walk me to the next chapter, to the next level, to the next step, to the next stage. If I have to go from here to here, if I don't know who I am, I can't get over here. You're just not going to, you're going to get here and you're going to go right back to the starting point because there's some things you got to figure out within first. So the real MVP mm -hmm. is, is your inner self and getting to know who you are and tackling that demon, whether it's good or bad, tackling that first. That, that, I just want to chime in on yeah. that. So as me and you on the same page. We already understand your body is the temple that the yes. Lord dwells in. Yes. So your inner self yes. is the Lord. It's your the Lord. inner self is Jesus. So that's for you too, brother, you yes. know, to hear. That is your inner self. Yeah. Well, you know why I'm here, though? Why? Because I believe in you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's Appreciate the, that's that, the man. Y'all you know I mean? so. can clap. Y'all can clap. Y'all can clap. Hey, yo. That's nice. Now I believe, too. <laughs> now, you now you believe. See that? That's great. The, the worst yeah. thing, though, the worst thing, right? The worst thing is right out the gate, right? You're going to have people that really believe in you. Yeah. And you got to have some people that kind of believe in you. You have some people, once they see it happen, then they believe. You know what I mean? So, right. like, I'm going to tell y'all, when I became the world champion, that's when I lost. Because I knew I was going to get to that point, And I heard people tell me that I wasn't ever going to be... Nothing. Right. Tell me they knew it was gonna happen for me. No, some of some of those some of those some That's of those, real, right? Some of those people was the closest people. So when I won a belt, I actually lost it in that same night because I, I seen that. So that was the start of a lot of a lot of storms for me at that very moment because like yo, I've been homeless, I've been poor, I've been through a lot of stuff in my life, you know what I'm saying? And for that moment to happen, it was robbed for me from people that said they they believe me. I know. And the worst thing to do in life is like when you know something gonna happen, you come back and say, "I, I told you it was gonna happen." That's the worst thing you can do. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You don't ever want to tell nobody. Yeah, I, I told you this was gonna happen. It's kind of like you doing that like maliciously. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you believe in yourself. Nobody else got to do that. Some people become invited. I, the worst thing I had to do. I was put in a lot of uh, situation where like. You know, people always trying to put you in a place where you you gonna compromise your integrity. You know what I mean? What you know is right. Now, now this is something I, w I wanted to get to because I don't know if this is where you're going, but um, there's always been a question of corruption in boxing. Yes. Is that something that you encountered before? I mean, yeah. I mean, corruption is is in the hands of individuals. 
So, you know, a manager might not have your best intentions. So my manager out the gate, he looked at me like an investment. He didn't look at me like a, a broke, starving kid that was looking for a dream to come true. Right. And my life was changed. Right. And for some forms, when, when, when you look at a person like that and they want you to look at them, like it's kind of they want you to look at them like they got. You know what I'm saying? But like... Um, I took the story for what it is, and I, I was I was thankful that I wasn't put in too many situations where my integrity was super compromised. But I see people do it all the time, and that's why it w w I was going crazy for a little bit. I had to go start seeing a therapist because when I became a world champion, that you know, it went from can you pay my my cell phone bill to like man, I'm about to lose my house. How much you got? How much you need, bro? Man, I need twenty racks. I heard that so many times. <laughs> I, I can't even yeah. you know, begin to brag and be trying to tell y'all that I haven't lost a lot of money because of people I thought, you know, were like businessmen. Businessmen is like fake ass businessmen. I hate to say it th that way, but that's what I had to learn in my life that a lot of people be having like false ideas, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm the one that's investing in those ideas and I'm going to end up to losing. I'm like, I don't know what happened. You know what I mean? So I think. You, you're going to be placed in a lot of those situations. That's why you got to make up your mind and know who you are and not be put in those situations. Or if you are, then you know how to learn to get yourself out of those type of situations or how to teach another person. Yo, man, this is what I've been through. This is my situation, right. this and that. I'm not built for entertainment. That's what it is. Entertainment? You know, was Was there a lot of pressure for you to do things that would uh, compromise who, who you always wanted to be then... I mean, meaning the champion, like, yeah. yeah. What, what were those situations like? What is it? Is it that crazy in boxing where you know somebody's gonna snake you along the way? Deontay Wilder's dealing with a situation. Yes. Had to deal with a situation where he felt like Tyson Fury cheated him. Yes. Well, I don't have to get into how, but there was enough that you know he got the rematch back. But he felt like there were people not only on his team, but within boxing that set him up or, or had him put into, put into that position to take a L. Have you ever felt that way? No. I felt like everything that was like uh, that I've been through in my fights and winning and losing, it was appointed to me. So I don't, I don't, you know, I don't live, I don't, I never in my life uh, live, live with regret or right. things like that. So I think. You know, I guess it's all about the the, the Pacific person. But when we talk about Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, we talking about top tier fighters in the world, the best at what they do. Right. So a little bit of some of that might be a dude. I mean, you going in a fight, how is not for you to be personal about it? But at the same time, you get petty. So how can you get personal with money? So at mm -hmm. the same, it's entertainment. You know why people go to entertainment? Be entertained. Uh, it's because they, they it's, it's not enough joy out there, so they look for entertainment. Mm. Entertainment is always going to be a substitution for joy. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. Mm. And you know why y'all said, mm? <laughs> because when you hear something good like that, it's like food. Yeah. So when you hear it, <laughs> <laughs> point that out. To point that out. Well, do, do you, what, what do you think about the Deontay and um, Tyson Fury situation? Man, listen, I think... You know, being a black man in America, I think it's always good for us to see a black man on that level. So I'm always going to root for him, even if he loses. Right. Because we, we, I got to, you know, do what I do my best to try to bring up our people. So um, I'm praying always for my brother. You know, I know him personally. And, you know, I think on that level and with that kind of money, you start dealing with, you know, personal things that you need to, like, fight through. And um, only the strong shall survive at the end of the day. So. Right. Only the strong survive. Yeah. You think entertainment might be evil? I think it could be used for anything. Anything you do in life could be used for evil or used for good. It's all on the person. It's all self-described. That's why having a podcast like this, um, you would do good as long as you get the right kind of content and the right kind of people because so many people got stories that people, you know, they need to either learn something or they need to be entertained. So I'm here to always teach. You right. know what I'm saying? I've been through a lot of stuff for me to... You know, I'm like, yo, I, my brother's with me. I love my brother. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? My mom really never gave us hugs when we was little. You know what I mean? So then when I hear you talking about your mom, like, yo, hero. I wish my mom was my hero. We was talking about man outside, and he was like, 
my, my father from my dad's from Cuba, born and raised. So right. me and my brother is like uh one of like my dad got um eight children, mm-hmm. four different women. Um, two wives currently right now. And um he raised other people's kids too, so I got like it's like twelve or thirteen of us. You know what I mean? So my brother was telling telling somebody out there, you know what my dad used to do? He used to take us at other women's houses that he used to cheat on my mom with and tell us not to say nothing. He would like, you wanna sit on you wanna sit on my lap and drive? That's how he would so we wouldn't tell my mom nothing. Yeah. But that, that's what we've been through as kids. So we wow. never got a good example on how to love a woman or you know how to ha- be faithful to a woman, you know what I mean? So it's like those time for struggles come from our personal story, you know what I mean? So you said eight kids, eight kids, two wives. Two wives. I mean, he got four different women. He got two wives currently. He got his wife in Cuba, and he got his wife here, which is my mother. And they've been actually um, separated longer than... They've been separated longer than they've been married. Wow. My mom tried to come to me. I'm married. I love my wife. And my mom tried to give me some, you know, try to say something about my wife. I said, Mom... Chill out. I've been married longer, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you had to shut that down. Yeah. Well, do, do you feel like, um, like, at what point did you realize, like, yo, this is something that's affecting my behavior? Because a lot of people go through life and they don't realize how much of their childhood affects mm-hmm. their behavior. Like, it echoes continually mm-hmm. throughout your life. When do you realize? When did you realize, like, yo? Man, I have so many different moments where I've seen that, but I think about that and try to grasp that answer every day. It's like everybody is walking this earth, just trying to make peace with God, making peace with their life, making peace with who they are. You know what I mean? So, you know, I've been in a lot of different, like, divinely inspired times in my life, and uh, I, you know, I could point one of those out. But I think one of those biggest things is when I really, you know. Um, Took up my first loss in my career. I got a dream in, in Florida getting ready. Wanted to be around Cuban, the Cuban acting out for like real Cuban in that time. Right. And I was training down there. I got in my very best shape and I got a nightmare or a dream. And it's that you're going to lose and I'm going to lose in the first round. And um, I went into the ring to fight Danny Jacobs and I was looking at him like I was, I never walked in a fight. And I walked in there with a little bit of fear. But when I fought him, I was fearless. I was looking out, so I'm going to knock him out. And I went straight at him, but I seen it happen when like, he came in the dream. And he stopped me. And, you know, that was hard to deal with at that moment because I was looking so unstoppable. And, you know, for that that moment come. But that's the time round. when I, yeah, but the first round. And then I looked up, I remember looking up. And I said, okay, God, I'm listening now. So I, mm. from that, that's been my journey right there. So I've been walking with the Lord now six years, you know what I mean? Just straight working on convictions, trying to um, you know, read my Bible every day. I think that, that, that fight could have been the one that did it. But, you know, being in homeless and being on the train, I tell people this story. I was coming on the train, on the Ford train. A dude kicked me out of his house. He actually was over me with a hammer. And he's telling me, I said, man, just let me go. I was like 18. I was 18 years old, yeah. And when he um, kind of like, uh, he brought me here. I didn't have no family here. I didn't know nobody here. You know, I was like working at IHOP. I worked at a chicken shop. Uh, they called it a Vivero. You know what a Vivero is? A live butcher shop. Mm. I was killing like 700 chickens a day when I lived on the Lower East Side. So I had all the IHOP in the Bronx, 232nd and Broadway, and then the Lower East Side working at this, they call it the Sting Shop. So. All those humbling experiences, you know, that one moment where I was on the highest level and I couldn't crash and down and still be not walk with shame in my face because after the post fight, I think I saved a lot of my dignity because if you heard the post fight interview, you know, I gave him his credit. You know, he, he was fighting cancer. And I don't know what, my uncle died of cancer. Right. You know what I mean? So. My brother too. Yeah. So, but, but, but the craziest thing is like, I, I turned on a lot of money from Jay-Z, like $1.4 million. 1.4. 1. 1.4. From Jay Z. From Jay. What was that? What was? I mean, like, uh, I was the, I fought Gabriel Rosado. Right. I was in camp in California. My wife was pregnant with my my first kid, and she had a miscarriage. And 
you know, I was like in the camp and she wanted me to come out there. I said, you know, it's nothing I'm going to be able to do to bring the baby back. And that probably wasn't the right thing to say. Right. And um, put a big strain on me and her relationship. So, you know, you know, trying to work through that issue, I told God in the prayer in my mind, I said, if I was ever put in that situation again, where I had to not compromise my job, I was going to pick my family. Right. And that, 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 that thing came around and it was like $1.4 million. I just had a son and I found out my uncle had pancreatic cancer. And um, that was the hardest thing to ever see. Somebody that fought so hard for me, looking and being him so weak on him. I mean, he was trying to be strong though, but wow. I seen him breaking down and I, I had a moment with him. When I actually, you know, I had to turn down the fight. I turned down the money and a lot of people thought, you know, my, my advisor Al Heyman told me that. The worst thing is like people couldn't understand. I was look. I just had a kid three days ago. I want to spend time with my son. Right. My uncle is dying. I'm confused. I don't want to, I don't think, like, I've worked all my whole life to live on people's couches and being homeless. And I can't say I don't want to fight right now. This ain't the time for me to fight. Right. Give me a couple months so I can get my mind together. Nobody was listening to me. So I, I basically said, what's the options for me? He said, well, if you don't decide to fight, which you can, um, they're going to strip you. And then what else can you do? Well, he said, you can always vacate the belt to save yourself dignity. I said, well, I'm vacating the belt there. And I vacated the belt. But for me, I think sometimes it was like me saying no to the devil. Because after that, my career started going down, toppling. After that, my fight, next fight after that, I got my money back. I made mm. double the money back. And um, I got my first draw in my career. And then I fought another dude, and then I fought Danny Jacobs, and then took my loss. Mm. You know what I'm saying? All after that deal. Because before that got that deal, I was basically looking unstoppable. He's talking about top 10 fighting Canelo, fighting Triple G, all these names and stuff like that. And uh, I had the ball in my court and, you know, moments like that happened and came out. So the 1.4, that was for? They say 1.4. The worst thing is, it's not 1.4. I got a manager. I got a trainer. I got a promotion. The worst thing to do, because when you got boxing, you got other, other sports like basketball, right? You got people that go to college. But real fighters are made in the hood, made with nothing. They don't hardly got no food to eat. Right. And you get them in the game, it's easy to take advantage of them because they're always looking for somebody to be with them. And people latch on to that and take advantage of that. That's the, that's the worst and hurtful thing. I just started a trucking business. Not to say I'm hurtful to see... Um, a guy that Mike Tyson fought in Atlantic City, he was from Atlantic City, and um, he was driving a high load. And, like, you, you wouldn't even know that. <laughs> Nobody even, when people hot, it's, but when, when they done and, and done, they don't have nothing to show for their career, nothing that they did, nothing. So what does that 1.4 break down to? I would say probably seven. seven. Yeah, about seven. Seven? Sound like a rapper. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah, but you know, yeah, yeah, all right, right. yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm adding that to all that in because like the worst thing is like in my in my career, like making money, you know, having people help you, like your friends and stuff. They still should be able to sign 1099s. I mean, they should be able to pay their own taxes with the money I gave them, but that didn't happen. So I had some people that didn't pay their taxes for the money I end up had to pay for them. Mm. And there wasn't no managers. These are friends. Bing! Yeah. Wow. When you look back at that, do you think that was a test that you passed in your life, that offer that you turned down? Yeah. See, what people would have thought, they would have been coming here, I would have been coming here talking about, I want to be their mom, I'm going to knock him out. But I'm saying, it's always an opportunity to learn something. So, been through the deepest stuff, the roughest stuff, but like God has saved me. He anointed my forehead. He came down, ate with me, so I'm thankful. Right. So it's a good opportunity to always teach a young, hungry, starving kid that's trying to get this and get that. They don't know all the downfall. They want to show you what glitz and what. My mom always said, whatever, don't, it said everything that shines in, everything glitter, that glitter, shines in, it's not, it's glitter. not glitter and gold. Right. She also used to tell me, um, I keep it funky like hot cat piss on the tin roof. I don't know what the fuck that is. Now, I mean, it, it's... Boxing, um, the training, what goes into it, um, rapping, uh, pretty much any anything that you do in life that you put your time into, and you know you strive to be the best. 
there's always these moments that you have to bounce back from. And I've always wanted to ask somebody, but I've never been cool enough with a boxer to ask them. In those moments when you're taking the L, like what is the feeling? Like what's going through your mind when you you like this and the next moment you like, wait a minute, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Gonna... This, nah, nah, how did I get here? Like what what is the feel? What is the thought? What's the process? Because some of us, some of them don't bounce back from that. Well, some, so I've been in one moment where the dude hit me hard and said, don't get hit with one of those no more. <laughs> but like, and when I fought Danny, I said, oh, man, it's happening to me. Aww. Oh, it's going to happen like this. And I'm talking to God, like, God, right, for real, like Right this. there, right it's, there, it's, on, it's, the can, it's, on the yeah. canvas. But the, No, now I wasn't on the canvas because I had to go back in prayer and say, yo, God, why you let it happen like that? He said, what you mean? I let you save your dignity. I said, why? He said, you died on your feet. Mm. Mm. That's better to do than for dying in the A lot of people die in their knees. But right. if you go back to the fight, I advise everybody watch this. It's a good teaching moment. Everybody don't win in life. Can you break down those moments? Those moments when I was in there, I was like, it's going to happen to me. And I was like, man, it's going to happen. You said it before it happened? No, I was I said it in the mind why it was happening. That's what I was saying. I was like, man, for real? Like, man, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I don't like this. And I was trying to like... I know. <laughs> You know, it's like um, I had to learn to live with that moment. And learning to live with that moment when you're there is the most important thing you could ever do in life, bro. Wow. Yeah. Is to be really in that moment and, and, and know what's going on. I was totally aware of that moment. Mm. Wow. You know what I'm mm. So you kind of accepted defeat as it was happening before it even happened or it already happened and you said, I'm, I'm accepting this, I lost, like I'm well, taking it. As a God-fearing woman, your, you know, your victory ain't always the Lord's victory. Mm -hmm. The Lord's victory may give you the victory. So I was saying in that fight, he said, you got the victory now. And I had to go learn what that victory what that was. Meant. And that what wow. that meant. So I got that as a thought. And I was like, man, what does that mean? And I found out why I got the victory because my life is saved. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. So I'm not worried about yeah. nothing. Nobody could touch me. I walk around here with my jewels out. My brother was worried about, man, you should burn one of your... I said, bro, you get caught with anything around here. It's like two years. Yeah, three. Yeah. More, they, more. See, he know the number. Three and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I'm saying I'm walking cover. And I, <laughs> I don't walk with that as, as a fear. Because right. people would have said that I, I, I brought that fear to me. I had a dream and it, I, I, you, you, you grabs you was thinking about that front and then it actually happened. But who to say that God didn't allow that to happen? Because right. Ecclesiastes 3 talk about... Everything is appointed by God, everything. So I had to learn to figure out what was I appointed to and what was I not appointed to. Mm. Did you continue to box after that? Yeah, I'm, I'm boxing life right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, boxing the ring. Um, I fought Angulo after. I took a loss, but I've been having super weight problems. When I fought Danny Jacobs, I was coming down from 195 pounds in eight weeks, and I made I weighed 159 pounds in that fight. I asked you that question because... Me, myself, you know, knowing combat, one of the problems I had when I went into boxing, fighting, anything like that, I wrestled with the voice of God saying to me in my head, that's not what I want you to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to hurt another man and to get in the ring and to take a sport to hurt someone, you know, to, and I used to wrestle with that thought a lot, like, you know, what type of sport is that to step inside a ring to hurt someone, you know what I'm saying? I hurt someone in self-defense and defense for my family and defense, you know, against, you know, destruction of evil. But to step in there for a sport, I always wrestled with that. Like, mm -hmm. where with that? Like, any is that you could take with another job and you could compare it to another job that God says, I don't quite want you doing that you know that's not quite correct. well is that is that the reason that you don't box anymore um, like i said it's it's like my perspective and totally changed and i i'm grasping life in a totally different way so things that people like people are always biased with judgment that's why it says in the bible an um an unjust weight is an abomination to the lord right so people's judgment is super off all the time about What's the righteousness of God? What you want to do in life? So coming into terms with those things sometimes be the hardest things. I know what I've done in my career. I know what I've got out of it. I'm thankful for it. 
I'm winning our life because I left Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I said, I'm never coming back here. My mom called me and was like, when I was like, man, I'm homeless, mom. I don't know where I'm going to go. She said, baby, you can come back home whenever you want to. I said, mom, let me call you back. And I just, I, I, I right there just decided I'm going to stay here. I was going to be homeless if I had to be, but I wasn't going to go back empty hamlet. And I came back home with a championship belt and my GD. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Now that, that these these battles that we face, sometimes uh, they're with friends, they're with close compadres, they're with people that you know you, you used to talking on the phone with, chopping it up, doing records together. Yes. And uh, then one day, you're on a live, and things go left. And you're not sure why. Because it's like, you know, a homie. Mickey Facts. <laughs> what, what's going on with you, Royce, and Lupe? What is going on, bro? Because we've seen... The lives, we know there was supposed to be a podcast coming together. You know, uh, it, it was camaraderie. I think somewhere that went left. What happened? Um, from my standpoint, I think it was a... I wanted to bring together lyricists and hip-hop to have a conversation about lyricism and hip-hop. Right. Something we all love. But it's never spoken about in the public eye. And um, I thought the conversations that we were having were, were great conversations that needed to be discussed, whether in front of you know, thousands of people or hundreds of people or whatever. You know, the, the, the goal was to engage each other in front of a mass audience so right. they can kind of get an understanding of what it was that these top tier level MCs were doing and how we put and structure our rhymes together. Right. And I think those conversations were great conversations. They're very important conversations. They were important and they yeah. were great conversations. And I think everybody can agree that they were great conversations. I think without, with, with the missing, like, you know, the source, Double XL, the write-ups, the hip-hop sites that everybody used to check that we would get these type of conversations from. Now that they're gone, it's like the only people that are still propelling this are the people that do it and the people who've loved it from back then. Right. So you guys created that. Yeah, we created that for like two weeks. Two it weeks. Was, it, was, it was great. It was great for two weeks. Then things went left. Things went left. Over what? What would you say was the main reason? I got my own opinion, but what would you say was the main reason? The main reason why I went left was because people, people were starting to see the conversation later. That's why I went left. What do you mean? So we had, we had conversations. It was, first it was me, Ransom, RJ, Lupe, and Royce. Right. And it was a great... Great conversation. Then it was me and Crooked Eye. Great conversation. What? Um, then it was me, Cassidy, Sari, the kid, and uh, Chilla Jones. Shout out to all of them. Great MCs. Great conversation. Right. Then, during the week of my birthday, mind you, this, that was July 13th, my birthday week. We were having this conversation at the end of June. Right. And this was, these conversations were hitting a lot of different MCs in the culture. And people were finding out about this conversation. It was trickling down. Because if you don't catch the live, people, you know, screen yeah. record it, they post it. They so, miss it. So people were catching up to it later, 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 later. So we're talking three weeks later, Mook and Lux call me. And they're like, yo, we saw this conversation about the best and all of this. What's up? We want to get Lupe and Royce to battle. Because they saw the conversation three weeks late. But how? How did they want to get them to battle? 
I can't answer that question because I don't I don't know. I got the I got the call randomly. It was a was, random was it, phone call. Was it call. like instigating or was it like we got a situation where we can make it happen? Or it was just, yo, we just It was yo, pick a side. And I was like, but we had this conversation already. This this is old news. Like what what are y'all trying to what are y'all trying to do? So it was instigating pretty much. I mean, I think they just wanted I think they saw the they saw the live and they didn't know when it happened. Right. So they thought it was like a yesterday kind of thing when it was a three week kind of thing. So we were all over it already. Right. So, you know, Royce, I guess I'm I don't know. What I know is I got a call from from Mook and Mook put Lux on the phone and then Mook put Rex on the phone and I'm just like, this conversation is old. Like we 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 spoke about this already. Right. So they hung up on me. They said, yo, pull up on the live later. I was like, all right, whatever. Like the conversation's over. Mm-hmm. Apparently they called Lupe. Lupe, you know. Lupe is hot because, you know, he's over the conversation. He wants to just rap. Nobody else wants to rap but Lou. Right. When you say rap, like he wants to... He's understand. like, he wants people to prove it. Like, if you, if you are the best, prove it. And he, he feels that it should be at EO Dub, which is a, you know... Shout out to EO Dub, man. I grew up in EO Dub, man. Right. That's my first, that was the first open... Well, no, not the first... But I used to be there every Sunday, religiously, waiting on that line to write my name on the list, get on that stage, and do my thing. I mean, I feel like it's, it's just the, the measuring stick of trying to be the best is, is something you can't quantify. I've, I've, I've said this and maintained this stance for the longest. You know, as, as, as humans, we can, we can feel we are the best, but it's being better than the person you were the day before. Right. That's how you become the best. And sometimes MCs... There's a, there's a time frame in which you're the best MC in the world. Jada Kiss experienced that against the lock. I mean, against Dipl- the diplomats. Diplomats, right. He experienced being the best MC in the world at that moment. At that moment. At that moment, he was the best, the best MC, MC in, in the world. world. Yeah. And nobody could, do, you can't argue that. Right. So it's not like he, 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 he continues to be the best MC forever and ever and ever. No, you get that moment, that's your moment, you hold on to it until the next MC comes and does something even crazier. That's how I always viewed, quote unquote, the best. Right. I don't understand though. How, the, a lot of those moments would be seeming like it's fighting moments. Do it be like that serious? To be like a moment where you like you over something, you just want to be done with it. You know, like those those situations and those scenarios seem like fighting moments. But why we don't see more of that then? Mm. More fighting moments or more more like yo man, don't disrespect me, bro. I'm a man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I mean, I, I mean that's. I mean, that's one of the reasons why people don't beef in hip hop because it's not the MCs that that have the issues really. Mm. It's everyone else. It's the it's the it's the it's the it's the, the fans. It's the, the media. Fans. The entourages. Your yeah. peoples. You know. Yeah, because the way that Jada and them did on the stage, it was like that moment. That seemed like I was a fighter. I'm like that's yeah. kind of a little disrespectful. A little well, bit. when he took took take Santana his, take his hat off. I don't let nobody touch my. But hand. you know, there, it's a, there's a it certain a bandana. level. Of, yeah, bandana. It was a certain level of camaraderie amongst them, so it was it was more showmanship. It wasn't like, you know, but I get it. Nobody saw him take Jada's hat later. What about so Cam kicking Styles P? <laughs> I don't know what was up with that, bro. Yeah. I'll be honest. Like, does anybody know why Cam was kicking kick, Styles P? Kick. Style Does anybody know? Yeah. Like, I, 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 I missed it. Like, yeah. I, don't I, don't know, know. I missed yeah. it. He was sitting on the beach chair. Right. Yeah. So Styles kneeled down to rap to him. Yeah. Right. And then Cam. Dick so, to him. So Styles nah. was <laughs> like Styles was talking shit. With that Cam. foot in the chair. Why are you rapping though? Right. What right. happened in the verse? You sitting down, so I'm going to get on you. And you got to yeah. understand this, this is losing at this time. So you got Styles over here. Styles over here. So I don't know, cause it looked like it looked like Styles was trying to grab his foot, and then he did it. I didn't see that. Nah, Cam kicked him. He's trying to get him off, like get out of my space, and then Styles. That's good. Styles was talking that shit with his mic. Styles all rapping his ass on one knee though. Huh? On one knee? I don't know. On one knee? He was on like one knee. He was crouched. He was crouched. And he just. 
Yeah. 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 Now that, that moment, it, it just, just seemed like. No, nah, because I want to. I want to know now what happens to Dipset now. Do how do people look at them now? <laughs> right. And that's yeah. what I'm on. I, I, mean, I, mean, I couldn't decipher. They feel like they acting like Dipset don't have a bar. Like they, they can rap. Of course. They can rap as good as the locks. No, that's this, this is what's gonna, gonna happen. Really this is what's gonna happen. They're I, gonna go on tour. Yep. By the I I, I can almost guarantee by the end of this tour. It's either going to be a rematch or There's Kiss no versus Cameron coming in the future. Something. No. Something. Well, well, Something's going to happen. I know that. Stay Proper. Stay Proper is a part of it, too. So it's, 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 three, it's three legendary groups in the mix. But, but hold on, hold on. Let's get, I, want to get, I want to get back to where, where you was going with that. So that happened. And that kind of fueled things up because Lupe wanted people to get. He wanted people to rap. Rap, right? And why wasn't there rapping? So you know, uh, Lupe. Lupe comes into the live with Guru and Royce and myself, mm -hmm. and he's hot because you know he he in his mind he's like, why are we still talking about this subject? I don't want to battle you, on URL. I don't I don't want to go there. I want to I I rather do EO Dub. And, you know, he, I guess, you know, he, he came into the room aggressive. But he came into the room aggressive because of the phone call he got from Lux and Mook. So, Royce. So they instigated it, pretty much. I mean, Royce. Harlem. Royce is. Um, That's what it is. Yeah. Royce is. Royce notoriously doesn't like people raising their voice at him. Right. So he responds with, who are you talking to? And Lupe responds, if you want to, you know, be embarrassed, if you want to make a fool out of yourself, then, you know, let's do this. And then, and then Royce responds with, step in the ring, bitch. And that's, that's, and that's, 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 yeah. that's what set everything off. So it depends on how you look at it. Are you, are you, are you faulting Lupe for being aggressive on the chat from what L Lux and Mook? you know, mm -hmm. initiated, right. or are you mad at Royce for calling him a bitch? So that, it, it's like, it's a give and take, and it's, it's people are divided. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in between, because now I'm mad at both of them for being that sensitive. I'm listening to these guys rap about killing MCs for years, and finally you got an MC to kill, and it, it gets all jumbled and confused. I don't understand that. So Lupe jumps off the live, Lupe starts freestyling right. on the live, going at Royce. Royce takes four, five, six days. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. Respond? The, and four, he five, responds. Six. Oh, man. Okay. He responds with <laughs> Lambda. He responds with his Lambda record, which was super dope. Silence of the Lambda. Silence of the Lambda. Silence of the Lambda. I thought it was a great art piece. Right. You know, I thought it was dope. And he, uh, what? It no, was. because, like, I, I'm listening. Did you hear? Oh, did you? Did no, you? I didn't okay. hear, but I'm listening to a nah, lot. Nah, I mean, I thought, it was, I, thought it was, I thought it was a dope art piece. I thought it was him showcasing what he does. Right. He took, it, was, it was a dope art piece. It wasn't like. It wasn't like. So, the, like, if I wanted to, right? If I wanted to say, I want to. I want to come out with a gospel rap album and I'm going to sell it as an art piece. How can, can I do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can. They call those yeah. NFTs. NFTs, yeah. yeah. They call those NFTs. But, but he, when they say art piece, he means like, um, they were calling it a Lupe diss. But I don't... But when you listen to it... It wasn't really... Like you he, don't really get that but I'm feeling. Because he's saying it's like hip-hop. This is what it is. This is what you do. But like, you know, as a boxer, if you look at that same conversation with a two boxer, you calling them the word, the, the B word and all this like that, that's very disrespectful. Right. So... so How what's can you next? overlook that, brother? I'm trying to I mean, I was, it yeah. wasn't me who got cursed at. But if they, I mean, and then you tell me like other people is bang, they calling you and they banging it on you like that's disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> that's disrespectful. Lupe got off, he got off the live. Right. But, but why, why would they like, bro? Because he's would, like, go practice. Because now, because I'm, I'm about the freestyle about you. Right. So he, so he did the freestyle. I'm guessing Royce saw the freestyle. He's like, all right, watch this. Royce writes seven minutes of a great, just, just lyrical, showing his skills. With like jabs at Lupe, right? So it wasn't hard hitting stuff, but it was jabs just to right. let you know. 
Yeah, I'm not somebody. I could do. It, I, it wasn't hard hitting stuff. It, it was like it was like you. He was like you was got like, big gums and small teeth. You dancing teams. around, but every now and then you come back to the opponent. Bop, and you bop. just go. Bop, 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 bop. And then you go <laughs> do so, a waltz, so a ballroom waltz around the room, and then you come back down and just go. Bop, bop, bop. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's what, what it, that's what it was like. That's what that's, it was that's like. What it, that's it was, what it was. ill lyrically, but. <laughs> I, I when I when you pull it up on YouTube, it says Lupe Fiasco this, and you're like, oh, let me click this, and then you get the ba 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 in the wall. So, you know. So some people take different things differently. Right. Lupe hears hears it, and even though it's a ba ba ba, Lupe like, nah, we oh. gonna fight. I don't pop, pop, pop. And three hours later, <laughs> which one right. are you gonna fight like for real? No, 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 lyrically, no, no, no. lyrically, lyrically. Yeah. 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 You a boxer, party? I don't. You a boxer, party? Maybe I need to get that out of my head. Get that out of my head. So Lupe was. Yeah, Lupe was on the phone. So Lupe, Lupe responds. No, no, no. Royce drops this at like three in the morning. Right. I'm sleeping. I wake up and Lupe already has a response out at like 6.30 in the morning. Wow. Three so, hours so later. So this guy takes... Three Royce, hours. Royce takes five, maybe six days to write this thing. And Lupe responds in three hours. Three, four hours. And puts it out. And it's... Steve Jobs. It's, That's the name of the it's track. It's heavy-handed Steve, punches. It's Steve not, Jobs, yeah. It's not... Pop, pop. It's... Boom, 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 boom. Tyson. Boom, 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 boom. Throughout the whole song. You know what? If, Lupe. Any, if anything they should do, they should get you as like the micro buffer. No, no, no. Because listen, no, I, no, I, no. I'm, 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 if it was me behind, like listening to this, I was like, man, let me go hear that track right now. <laughs> no, man, right? Yeah, no. You, you, I mean, you everybody's heard it, it that's probably listening to this. But he got, you got dissed. I got, my name was said twice. On this, on the pop, pop, pop. pop. So when you come, <laughs> when you come, did you, did you respond? I love it. Facts. Because initially, from the first live, Royce was like, "Yo, Lupe, you automatically get." Right. You, know you got a shot. Is that, was that the, you know what I'm saying? The situation. So how, reason, the reason how is Ransom tied in? How is Ransom tied in? I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I'm not, I'm not knowing what's so going on. So RJ, RJ Payne right. made a tweet and said, I'm, me and Ransom are the best rappers rapping right now. Mm -hmm. That's how this whole thing started. And Royce responded on IG saying, how are you the best? How, how is this? How is this possible? And he responded on IG with this, and it was, you know, it was in a way in which RJ was like, "But why are you? Why is there so much pushback from you? Aren't I not supposed to feel like I'm the best?" Mm -hmm. And when RJ did that, I wanted to mediate it so we can get a clear understanding of what Royce meant and what RJ meant because. From the on, from the outside looking in, it was like, whoa, this this looks like a, this looks kind of crazy. So I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Mm. So that's what I that's what I curated to make sure everything was good. Right. So you stepped in the middle to make sure everything was good. And you got a pop pop pop. <laughs> <laughs> so I got slapped twice. Pop pop. Right. Wow. And I was like, okay, you know. It's cool. Good. it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Nobody's right. nobody's really angry about getting pop pop like that's because right. it was literally a pop pop. Like I didn't really care too much. Right. The internet said Royce lost to Lupe. Yes, that was the consensus. Now this is where it gets tricky because in the midst of people saying that Lupe got that round because everybody was expecting more. Everybody thought the pop-up was like, I'm testing you out. Let me see where it's at, right? And then Lupe responded, and they were like, okay, Lupe got the first. Let's see where it's going to go next. And then out of nowhere, the Wraith drops. That's not out of nowhere, the Wraith drops. That's not how the story did goes. You, did you forewarn people, like, I'm, now I'm going to start punching no, people? No, no. That's okay. not how it happened. Okay, you came well, back with the pop-up? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I, I got to hear your pop-up. He, he, he came back with the... 
So this is what he happened. He did a drop by and the car was on fire <laughs> when he did it. Lupe drops Thursday morning. Right. So the internet throughout the whole day says Lupe won. Right. That Thursday night, I get on live with, Roy, uh, with Royce and Three Letter Man. Mm -hmm. And they, they asked me what did I think about the song. And I said, I thought Lupe won. And then... At that moment, Royce begins to antagonize me. Is this Will Button? Is this Will Button? Yes, this is the live with Joe Button. Did you see that live? No, I did not. Okay, cool. Right? I'm gonna watch it now. Oh, you? Yes. Yeah, it's, 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 I don't watch it's anything must, Joe Button. It's, it's does. must see TV. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Shout out to Joe. I'm playing. So, so they start. So, so Royce in front of three thousand people starts discrediting me and my accomplishments and, and career in hip hop and right. my legacy. They, 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 they tried you to like, belittle you. you. They tried to belittle me. Well, he right. tried to belittle me. Yeah. They were questioning me and what I, I've done and contributed to the culture. Right. In front of 3,000 people. So now I'm like, my angry level is, is, is I'm calm throughout the whole interview. I'm, I'm very peaceful. You know how I, I, I'm not confrontational. So... I'm at a 30 now. So then they start this conversation about checking the boxes. Mickey, are you checking the boxes? And he's being very passive aggressive. And I'm, and I'm like, well, what are the boxes to check? And he's like, you are MC, you should know. So we do this back and forth. And it's just like, what is the, what what is the check in the box? Because I saw that. Check out, oh, they're checking the boxes. And I just kept seeing checking the boxes. He did that for a half an and hour. I'm like, what are these guys, gynecologists? <laughs> like, what is, what is checking the boxes, bro? So he did that for a half an hour. He did that for a half an hour. And, 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 and I'm, on, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there taking this. He's like, you're not checking the boxes. You're not checking in enough boxes. You're not checking enough boxes. What does that, that mean? Nobody knows. Because I asked him <laughs> mad times. God, he did not answer the question. I can't answer this question for anybody. No, none of that. Yeah. He didn't answer it, so we don't know. We can't assume, because because then he was starting to say impact and and longevity and doing this and doing that and 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 it was it was very convoluted. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm like, now I'm at 65% angry oh. because oh. now you playing because it's like I'm asking you a question. You my guy and you playing. Right. You my guy. Like we can talk about this. Do you, do you think he was in his feelings? I, I don't. He says he was trolling, and maybe he was trolling. Like he said that after. Yeah. Yeah. He, he said trolling. he was trolling after, okay. and he, right. you know, he was his level of sense of humor is different from everybody. But everybody on the live was like, "No, you was little boy and Mickey." Right. But there was a question. So then Joe Budden gets on the live, and uh -huh. it goes from three thousand people to ten thousand people, nine thousand, ten thousand people. Uh huh. And I'm like, Joe, if you're going to get on this live talking crazy, you need to rap. He's like, you don't, you don't question me. We're on two different levels. You don't talk to me like that. Oh, right? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Told you that. Told you that. So, so, so tells now. me this. Right? So now, I'm, it's slowly growing to 100%. Yes. Because now, I'm on the live just to, to give a response to the, to the, to the diss tracks. I'm not right. here to be belittled. I'm not right. here to be in told. In front of 10,000 people? people. Yep, the boxes but need to did, be checked. I guess, oh, that's crazy, man. <laughs> and then I don't need somebody who doesn't rap to tell me we, we are not on the same and level. Rivals. And then him and Royce are little Buddy. boying me to 10,000 people who probably don't know who I am. Right. So now I get off the live. Everybody says Mickey was very humble, mm. but you need to do something. I got off the live, I had 20 text messages. What they did was wrong, da 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 da. Right? Yeah. So listen, I said, all right. Did, pop, did you pop, hear pop, Tupac's I voice know, in the back? No. <laughs> like, at what point? No, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. I'm gonna get to, I'm gonna get to it. Back. I'm gonna get to it. Yeah. So Nick, you got to get the wind behind your back no, and go out place if you have to. This Wait. is Thursday. <laughs> this is Thursday night. Right. I said, okay. I go in my living room. I start listening to beats. I go to sleep. Oh. I wake up in the morning, 30 more text messages, all kind of DMs. They disrespected you. 
They played you. The peer pressure. You got belittled. You need to respond. And, and Royce told me yeah. to respond. Royce told me to respond. Right. He said, put your best foot forward and make sure you're intentional with what you do. He also had a line. <laughs> Our ambulance drove past the minute you said that. He also had a line. <laughs> right. Talking about, I put a hole in your son while you holding your son chips. Oh, man. So I asked him, who's this line for? Because Lupe doesn't have a son. And he says, and in quote, I um, didn't intentionally. I didn't intentionally mean it for you, but now it is. It's now it's for you, <laughs> and you can tattoo it on you and wear it. I want that oh. for you. Oh. Oh. oh, so okay. That's what savage. That's what so it's savage. savage. The pat 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 so wait, savagery so was on the pat 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 like I have, I wait, have no what percent fear angry this. are you at this point? Yeah. Like what percent? I just need to know the percentage. Off the, when we get off the live, I'm at a hundred. You at a hundred. But on the line, he did that. He did, yeah. what he did. <laughs> <laughs> you, like the, the spit flew out to my head, look straight and get out the line. Oh, yeah, man. so I, you know, and again, I look at it like we all have people that we look up to. We all have people that we, had, we, had, we had admire and admonish and have positive feelings for. Right. And it, it, I, I liken it to like, for men, if we get around women, right? You don't say, yo, yeah, yo, you remember that time Mick fell, he tripped, or, or he got holes in, remember that time he had, Mick, he had holes in his drawers? Ha <laughs> ha, you don't, you don't do that around a lot of people. You do that b b amongst each I other. I think right. a certain you character would yeah. do that. Publicly that humiliate. Right, so you don't, you don't right. publicly humiliate somebody and then antagonize them and tell them, yeah. you can respond, make sure you're intentional. So listen, I'm from New York City. The Bronx. I'm from the Bronx. So listen, I, I wake up on Friday morning I have breakfast, I kiss my wife, I say I'm not coming out of this room until I'm done. Wow. I kiss my son, I go in the room, I come out five in the morning on Saturday. You can hear the music oh, wow. playing. The... I, come out, I come out at 5 a.m. Everything is done, everything is written. Wow. I call the studio, all studios are booked up. Who did the artwork? Beautiful. I reached out to somebody from Detroit to do the artwork. Fire. I was very intentional about what I was doing. So, <laughs> check in the boxes. That's what you call check in the boxes. So, I got this from Detroit. So, I, I, I then reach out to someone. I reach out to Sari the Kid. Mm -hmm. I go to his studio. And he, he, he's like, Yo, I don't even want to be in here for this. You have to record yourself. So I recorded myself for the very first time. I recorded that whole song, and I put it out that Monday. And like he said, it was roll the window down. <laughs> Ooh. And like we are where we are. So that's what happened. I wouldn't just intentionally diss Rush right. the Five Nine. Right. It was a series of events. Where it's like you keep of playing line, with me. Of, of, of line you stepping. Keep playing with me. You disrespect Why you what I contributed to the me. culture. Right. You talk about checking boxes. Mm -hmm. We're this sonship line. And you got your man who comes on the live and belittles me in front of 10,000 people. Right. And it's like, why would you why would you do that with me? Somebody who's from the Bronx who's crazy. Like I I don't have it all up here when it comes to writing those kind of raps. Because I'll, I'll constantly, consistently do it. So I do that. And now he's, you know, he, he's how he is. However he's feeling now, that's how he is. Now, now I, I got to see um, when he was on live talking about breaking people's necks after that. Oh, man. And, and I jumped in and I was like, yo, we don't want to see you break nobody's neck. Like, nobody needs that. We want, you know, the stuff that you've been rapping for all these years about killing rappers. We want you to go into the studio and kill some rappers. Kill the rapper. We are lyrically entertained. The things that <clears throat> these MCs do, it, it takes a, a high level of intelligence to do it. 
It stretches our imaginations when we hear the punchlines, the schemes, the wordplay, the, 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 the cadence. It, it entertains us. We like this. We don't like the other part where, okay, you dissed him, now your crew is going to run into his crew, and now and somebody got to die. That's, you know what I mean? That's why I'm, I'm trying to like, you know keep mean? up with y'all. We're not, like, we not trying to little dirk it out. So that, when he that, said break not... your neck, well, I'm thinking like physically or Physically. Literally. Physically. Oh, physically. Because you want to tell you, let me tell you, like Ransom is my brother. But. My first entrance song ever I ever came out to was Ransom. Right. I actually was in the studio when he was dissing Joe Buddy. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I would I would say honestly, you know, if if Joe had the nerve to say that to you, I wanted to know why he didn't have the nerve to say that to Ransom when it was when it was it was time to do something like that. That's that's what I'm kinda really kinda <laughs> confused about because I'm not even sure like how does how does when do y'all bear? So you you saying he never responded? He never said anything. No, he ain't, I never like it was like I thought that was like real drama behind that. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like I guess what I'm trying to understand is like when do it when do it go to the point where you have to worry about something? Like because I know now I'm I'm saying that you're saying like I'm 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 a hundred percent a rapper and this is what I do. So this is what I'm gonna keep it about. But when is it a line where like? Him calling you a B word, that's disrespectful. Well, he didn't call me that. Yeah. He called Lupe. he called that Lu he called Lupe. He called Lupe that. I said that's super disrespectful, brother. That's he crazy. didn't call me that. So I, I think that um You know you on here. But I had I feel like I was justified in responding in the way that I responded. Of course. Of course. Because he he doesn't feel that way. He feels like Anytime he was just playing. Says, you you're like you're not even on my. That's what he based. Yes, that's, and he has yet to respond. It's been right. eleven days. He has yet to respond, even though he. You, you think RJ is gonna play a play a role in it? No, I don't think I don't think RJ is gonna play a role in it. I believe that there will be other people that potentially jump in that had nothing to do with it. Like who? I mean, I've heard some rumors about certain people jumping in. Like who? Let me Crooked <laughs> Eye, potentially. Crooked Eye. Kid Vicious, his brother. That might be that might be a problem. You know, these, you know, for me, these people weren't not named. Like trying to, they, they trying to team up or nothing like they yes. were all in a group. That's crazy. Yeah. But, that's, they, but they weren't that's not affair. these that's... people weren't named. That's my thing. Like I didn't say their names, Lupe didn't say their names, and neither did Royce. My name was said, Royce's name was said, Lupe's name was said. Right. I didn't say Crooked's name. I didn't say Kid Vicious's name. Now, if Kid Vicious wants to step in for his brother, that's perfectly fine. You got to do what you got to do if you feel that way. But I didn't say his name. I had, I've never spoken his name. This is my first time ever speaking his name, period. But I've heard things that, you know, th th this is how they're going to respond. But what they don't understand is I'm from the Bronx. Yeah. I'm from the Mecca. You hear that? I'm you from hear. where this started. <laughs> Do you hear it? Okay. Do you hear it? So I have no chill. Okay. I never stop. I would have liked mm. you to say. I never stop. Hey, yo, I heard. Say that. You got to do it. Say it. Say it. Say what you just said. Just like that. Say it just the way you said it. Say it like that. Cause you know yeah, what? Yeah, Cause me, we, me and this guy went around a room of 20 rappers and I set it off. I dissed everybody in the room except for him because I felt like he was the only nice dude in the room. Dapped him up when I got to him and went back around the rest of the circle dissing everybody. And then it went around. Nobody dissed me back. <laughs> so he figured out, oh, oh, they soft in here. All right. <laughs> he did the same thing. Dissed everybody. Got to me. Dapped. Yo, I wish somebody had, I don't know who has that footage, That's crazy. but like, that was an incredible moment you for, dissed them, for us. You dissed them in rhyme form? Or you dissed them I like freestyled, dissed oh, everybody oh, that was okay. in the cypher. It was an audition for a label, but they decided to throw a cypher and videotape everybody. Oh, okay. So me being from Brooklyn, I was like, yo, we get to diss people? And he was like, yo, <laughs> do your thing. You and I said, all right. You freestyle off the head. Word. You see everybody in the room. Off the head, this everybody, off the head. Right. Off the head. Got okay. to him, dapped him up. 
and went back around, and he did the same thing. We've been friends ever since. Oh, wow. that's cool. That was 18 years ago. Yeah, we've been friends ever since. So, <laughs> ever wow. since. So, you know, ever like, since. For me, for me I, I'm, I'm saying this now, like, I'm on the defense. I'm not starting anything with anybody. Right. So but but if, the, this is what I don't like, though, Mickey, because I felt like when you got on the live with Royce, they, you were a little apologetic. And I don't feel like you needed to be apologetic. I apologized. For anything. I apologized bro. for one line. What was that? That's the line. That was the Cassidy line, because me and him did have a conversation about the Cassidy situation. And, you know. What was the Cassidy line? What was line? the, because I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. Cassidy situation. <laughs> uh -huh. Me and Cassidy got on, on live, and Cassidy said to me, I heard there was an issue. My name was brought up. Ball, what's the issue? <laughs> what's the issue though, Ball? And right. I was like, I don't know. I think I think Royce may have had an issue, you know, with you saying something about, you know, my expert opinion. Yeah. I didn't see the episode. Right. Where you were talking about Eminem and piecing up syllables. I think that I think that's what it might be. Right. So, and then Cassidy was like, well, I don't have an issue with Royce. I don't have an issue with M. I was just talking about my you know, his preference. His preference. As far as like how how he does his science. Right. So Royce hits me on the side and is like, yo, I didn't like how you said that. Well, on man, on the side. Crazy, bro. And I was like, all right, my fault. They're like, how you said what? That he had an issue, that Royce had an issue with Cass. So I was like, yo, my fault. We're gonna squash this with Royce, Cass, Crooked Eye, on, and we're gonna talk about regional sciences, how people put together their rhymes from different regions. Right. New York, Philadelphia, LA, Detroit. Right. That was the purpose of that phone call me and him had. I apologized to him privately, and then I apologized. I was going to do it publicly, right, to avoid what happened. Cass couldn't make it. Royce couldn't make it. So Royce gets on Instagram and says, yo, I want to clear this up. There's no issue. Right. But when it's time to diss... You got to flip and spin the narrative. Right. And I like the bar that I said. What did you say? <laughs> and stop fibbing too, nigga. You was mad at Cass and turned to Rakim when he asked. Ain't like the aftermath. I like the Rakim bar. What? It was more Fine. about the Rakim bar. Yeah. It wasn't about you being mad. And nobody cares about the bar. Right. Nobody. Nobody cares about that. But he that. cared. He cared. And, I, and for me... And, and Matt, for me... Man, I just feel like no, Royce is out there caring Matt, too much, Matt, bro. Matt, no. <laughs> I just feel like he's out there caring honestly, too much, bro. Honestly, like, honestly, I, don't, I really don't know if... I, I, I feel like if it wasn't that cast bar, he would have took another bar out of it and made it into something like that. Right. Because cause that was... For him, he felt like it was bigger than what it really was. Like, Because I played it for Cass, and he didn't give a fuck. The reaction to the, I've watched so many reactions to the song. I've spoken to so many different fans and people. Nobody has brung up that line. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Except for him. So now it's like, now we at the point where it's like. But you got to validate his feelings, like he said, right? So I was like, all you right, you know what? That. My fault for that bar, my fault. Right. But I'm not apologizing for any other bar. And I didn't. I apologize for that. I don't think you should apologize yeah. for anything, anything, He said so much to son. I don't no, think, yeah. That, that, if he tell you, yo, no. son kiss, that, that, no, no, that, no, no, no. I ain't apologize. The damage nothing. is done. The verse is out there. It's, st it's standing the test of time. Now, here's the question. Do you think he's still going to retaliate? I have no clue. And, and honestly, I don't care. I'm on the retaliation So you're keeping a it. clip in the chamber then? Ain't no clip in no chamber. <laughs> it's done. If I hear the record, 24 hours later, it'll be recorded, and then 24 hours later, it's coming out. Can I, can I borrow your hat real quick? That's can it. Your hat. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not clip, I'm not clipped up. I'm not clipped you, you up. You don't got another clip in the chamber. On my son's life, I don't, on my son's life. Can somebody else give me a hat? Somebody else pass me a hat? <laughs> On my son's life, I don't got no bars ready Mickey for Royce. Mickey don't got no other bars about this situation at all, okay? Everybody's None. got it. If that was the case, But ain't that like premeditated murder when you already got something in the clip already? 
It is premeditated murder, right. but I don't, I'm waiting for whoever responds. Look, you you, you got to stay ready so you don't got to get ready. I don't right? need right, to stay it. ready because I'm ready. That's it. He ready yeah. already. Right. If he dropped the night, I will get up, take this mic off, and leave, and then write, and then it'll be out. What's today? Friday? It'll be out Monday again. Wow. Mm. I don't I don't play these games. Mm. I've written verses in 10 minutes. The verse that I wrote for him, I wrote that shit in 10 minutes. Mm. I don't play these games. <laughs> now nah, nah, he got to say the verse. Let me hear the verse. Let me hear the verse. Flex it. Let me hear the verse. There's a lot of flexing going on in here. I got to hear. I got to hear. It's a lot of. Now you got to say the verse. There's a lot of flexing going on in here. I don't play these. I, don't, I, don't, I really seriously don't play these games. Like, I don't, I, I, I'm not. You're I have team. not one bar written for Royce. You're an on deck writer. Yes. Okay. The time comes. And I and Nikki's gonna do his I thing. appreciate that. Now, now I want to give my take on it. I love what's going on, <laughs> Royce. I hope so you, you, you like stay the in your feelings, bro. And I hope you take all those feelings you have and walk into a booth and make a masterpiece. I hope you're sweating tomorrow like, damn, he really came back. And then you go in the booth and do the same thing. I want this to keep going. I want it to keep going. As long as it doesn't go where it's not supposed to. I want to ask you, how, do you want it to keep going? Do you want it to Is keep it going? Is it entertainment? I don't care if it keeps, I don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter These are matter rappers who rap about being the best. Okay. They rap about being the best, knowing that there's other rappers <laughs> in the world. You feel me? So at some point, somebody going to be like, nah, wait, man, wait. it's me. No, it's me. It's me. Okay, let's find out. And that is what it's all well, how about. How do we find out by the, like, the, the consumers who, who listen to? Like, how, who judges? The other connoisseurs. The other connoisseurs. The fans enjoy. The fans. Of course, they'll make their own judgments. Yep. But the connoisseurs are going to be the ones sitting back. The like, Jedi's. Is it, is it the rappers? rappers? Right. Who, who, who judges right. the situation? Right. Who, who's opinion matters to say Biggie Fats won or, you know what I mean? Look. Or, it, it, these guys won the, the only the people, the people that are going to love this the most are the rappers. Mm-hmm. We're the yeah, ones that been writing for years to be the best. Yep. And when we see stuff like this, it inspires all of us. It's like war. You know how technology, like, it just jumps, like, five years in it, like, like ahead yep. during war times. Because one side is trying to outdo the other side, and everybody's working as fast as they can to, to be more advanced, to be better than the other side. Yes, sir. And out of that comes great records. I said this last night on the show. Um, we didn't just get ether. We got a classic album. It's when still Nas was on the decline. That's still matter. We didn't just get Takeover. We got a classic album. Blueprint. Mm. And this, this is something that the culture needs, but we don't need it to go where it don't need to be. So, Royce, please, please, I understand you're a man of respect, but you're also an MC, and if you respect and love this culture, please stop talking about breaking people's necks, bro. Yes. Or is doing what they can. We don't need that. Now I want to ask you, we don't those need Jedi's, that. Did you, do you get some of those Jedi's that got, you got the attention of those Jedi? And oh. did they choose a side? And, and when, if they did choose a side, was it hurtful to see that? Yeah, I've spoken to a lot of Jedi's. Mm-hmm. I've spoken to a lot of Obi-Wan Kenobi's. <laughs> I've spoken to a lot of, I've spoken to a lot of Yoda's. Right. Which is which is the grandmasters, right. yep. the godfathers, the gods of this. Right. And they said, look, you did what you had to do. And, 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 and it's and, love. And it's love. But that's because they from New York. So they understand what this is. It's not violence. I have no ill feelings towards Royce. Don't let Royce fool you for one second in not knowing what it is, bro. He knows exactly what it is. Well, then Rest listen. Rest in peace to proof. He knows exactly what it is because that the, the battle scene in Detroit was cultivated. Yes. And all of them were a part but of it. But it still started from here. And at the end of the day, it's, it's respect for him. It's respect for everyone who, who, who decides they want to participate. But just know, we don't stop. I always know somebody, somebody career. Bad boy. 
like with 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 inter- entertainment can be ruined forever. Like we don't feelings. stop. Let me I tell forever. you. Let me tell you why I say that, right? Because mm-hmm. I remember this moment. Like I used to like Sticky Fingers until he boxed on MTV, and then I was like, no yeah. more. <clears throat> but that's no take more. that. But that's going in the wrong. Direction. That's going in the wrong direction. No, the wrong what I'm direction. saying though, like, how do you make it? Make sure that it don't go in the wrong direction. Because because I'm not. That's not the energy I'm I don't on. Think the politics can affect this type of lyrical energy. Mm. Yeah, are we good? No, I'm happy. I'm straight. Want to see it, it could happen. Oh, okay, so if it happens in battle rap, it could happen. It could happen. It could happen. Listen, it could happen. Listen, I'm, it could happen, I mean, bro. I've gotten phone calls, but at the end of the day, if I feel like it's a wor- if it's a worthy enough record, because I've he's he's talented. Royce is extremely talented. So if he decides to respond, I feel like it will be top tier. It will be a master class in what he does. It's just, the, it's just he's not the only person who knows how to do master class lyricism. And I feel like in his mind, it's him and then there's other guys, Black Thought, Crooked Eye, Eminem. But he's not taken into the effect that there are other guys that can do what you do. Right. And they, ain't, they can do it well. Right. So don't, you know, I won't never, I will never look down on an MC that, that might not have the same credentials that I have. And, and shit on them. I wouldn't do that. I, I'll show them that respect and that love for their contribution to the culture, whether it's moving it forward with their talent or supporting me as a bigger artist or other bigger artists. Right, because he so might rape you. Do y'all, even got, <laughs> he might do y'all you. got guys y'all listen to that y'all like? I listen to everybody. So do you got a top five? Yeah. Who are your top five? Black Thought, Royce, Lupe Fiasco, Fonte, and Elza. What about you? That's that's my top. Math five for math five for math five. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> definitely yours, not doing that yours. right now. <laughs> not doing this segment. Those, but those are <laughs> not doing this segment. In terms of top five lyricists, but like top five rappers. Top above, five. Most of my top rappers. J. Big. Brown, rest Nas, in peace. Kane. Rest in peace. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. So like for me, that's 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 my top but, five. But but again, I want to stress. I want to stress to everybody that, that we need this in hip hop. We don't need um, the drill, the, 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 the funerals. We don't need none of that. We don't need none of that. We don't need none of that. And if you are too sensitive to play, bow out. Just bow out and say, you know what? I don't know if I can handle this. I'm stepping out. You got it. Salute to you, brother. And there's nothing wrong you with that. You got it. You got it. If you're too sensitive, just do that. Just do that. But we need this. Because I, need I, you know, I this. also feel like I we also feel like bow out, I also though. feel like rappers like, bow out. If you feel how do you do that? Because I feel like from an outsider, it sounds like that's what he's doing now. Like, brother, I'm respectful. I'm. But, but do I'm, they still I'm, respect you when you say you bow out? Think, Is that something that you? Do? I, think, I would respect. I, I would respect knowing that. If you feel like it's gonna go someplace it doesn't need to go, I okay. respect that you're saying, you know what? I'm not I'm playing good. no more. Okay. And I, cool. I think it's what, what you interpret, what you see. If you're seeing somebody get bullied, nobody should like a bully. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm. But but I would be I'd be very disappointed after hearing album after album of rappers killing MCs, and then when it's MCs to kill, nothing it's, happens. Nothing. 2021, like, Everybody needs to define shit, like the levels, like you saying, make it, bro. This is fucking a level, and it's this next level, level after that. Right. But who's at the top? Let's just get this fuck all that bullshit. Who's at the top? Like, rumble it out. The, the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Royal Rumble of rappers. Let's get it. Let's get it. I love the competition. I love the competition. As far as the drill, you know what I'm saying? Like. You know, I feel like it needs to be drill, but mm-hmm. not the funerals. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's different situations of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not knocking none of that. You know, the drill and you know, lyricists and bars. I'm not knocking none of that. You know right. what I'm saying? Because back in like maybe what '92, '93, you know, we had you know, we had a whole bunch of groups coming out. We had De La Soul. We had you know, what I'm saying Tribe Called Quest. Yeah. Then you had Wu Tang. Then you had Mob Deep. You had you know and saying? everybody got busy. You know what I'm saying? Then you, then you had um, some mix a lot. You know what I'm saying? You had right. MC Hammer. You had a whole bunch of people. You know, you had a commercial. You had 
Everybody's getting it just something, just doing it just signed at the right. same time. Right. But I, I feel right now it's not that situation. Yeah, it's not. You say so it's making people choose like, oh, well, we need lyricists, we need this, we need that. I mean, we can have it all. Right. Just choose what you want. You know what I'm saying? But it's the corporate that's just pushing certain things to the to the you know what I mean to the yeah, front. That's, that's gonna get that you in trouble. See, you know what I'm saying? That's gonna get you in trouble. Yeah, that's all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm I can get, get you it in all. When you listen, but just you choose what you want. I feel no, like no, no. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there, man. Like I've, I've, nothing without the artists. The corporations so, are right. And you're right. And you're right. The but there's always gonna be somebody that's gonna take the bag, bro. Right. So right. it's gonna yeah. be somebody. Right. But collectively, circle, our voice see. is louder than. You're right. Period. Any well, back in that time, in the early, in the mid '90s, it seemed like a Everybody lot of different genres together. of hip hop was getting pushed to the forefront. Right. So you can have a De La Soul go platinum. You can have a Sir Mix Block go platinum. You can have, you know what I'm saying? It's right. like commercial. It's, but you know but now it's like, it's, it's, it's almost like it's stopped. Now. It's yeah. stopped it's somewhere. Vinyls and strings now. Vinyls and strings. Back in the day, it was crazy. Back in the day, it was vinyls. Like, you had to buy the album. You had to buy the album. But everything was still getting pushed on the major levels. But you still had to sell your music, though. You can go to BT and see De La Soul, and you can see... You can see, like, Sir Mix a lot or MC Hammer or whoever. Right. You, know, so you can see everybody. You know what I'm saying? But now it's just like you can see a certain type. That, that, you know, but this, this, is, this is why I say it is very important because this is restoring balance. It's right. restoring balance. balance. The, 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 the attention that this is going to draw is going to bring more people over to listening to lyrics and actually thinking about what they're saying. But Mickey, yeah. seem like you seem like you don't want that to get people grasping on your music, hearing it in that way. That's what I it mean. I, I feel like I want people to to discover me, you know, organically, and 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 understand what type of man that I am musically. Like yeah. you know, I didn't. Right. I'm not someone who's the aggressor. I'm not the aggressor here. Well, what you what you it's, want? But you from the Bronx, what works. Though. I'm from it's the Bronx, two different though. things. But we on the defense. You know, I'm, I'm sure in the boxing world, they teach you defense before offense. You have to, you know, bob and weave. You have to parry. Like, I'm not throwing the punches here. I'm getting all the punches, and he's mad that I took the punches, and then, boom, hit you back. And it's like, whoa, 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 we were just playing. We were just playing. <laughs> and it's like, no, we were playing. You was playing. I was being respectful, and then this is where we are now. My whole career in boxing, man, is the whole thing of like, you know, he want to fight me. Why? He seen the, he think I'm weak, right. <laughs> and like that that's that be in my mindset all the time. It's like, where do they see some weakness in me that they? That, I mean, my my fight that I'm cool with him now. Gabriel Rosado yeah. was one dude, the first dude that ever got underneath my skin. So I'm like, when we did the stare, how did he do it? He did it by just you know saying all kind of stuff, just going disrespectful to the point like. You know, it's one thing, it's one thing to get money to go in the fight, but it's one thing how you do to get the money. Right. You know, some people, I'm, I mean, I've been respectful. I've had good business people that I want to fight him. That they, This is what we got for you presented, and then I can say, oh, that's, that he's a good, I don't want to test my, my challenge against this person. That's how it worked for me, but, like, not for everybody. That's why you, I never call, in my, in my whole career, um, I called Sergio uh, Martinez out, but it was people putting batteries in my back to do that. And, right. I, and I felt like, why do I got to do it like that? You know, I think if you go up in there and I keep fighting whoever they put in front of me, the opportunities that, that I'm supposed to be in, the, the, those fights I'm going to be, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have on my record, on my resume. Do you but, think? Do you think selling the fight sometimes people go too far? It's entertainment. You, yeah. We talking to my hand. I'm and I'm listening to the whole combo, and I'm like, he's what, what? Yeah, because I'm only entertained because I'm guessing like, is it real fighting or is like, is he? He's talking about breaking his neck. Is he like, he, no, he was saying it for real because I'm almost like getting confused. Is he <laughs> lyrically breaking his neck or he's like breaking his neck? No, for real? no. He's, he was he wanted talking to really about break really my neck. That's why right there I can't. Yeah, you can't yeah, really. You can't really go there. You can't yeah, really but go there. but so he was saying. You know, all the violence, all this stuff like that, right? You know, if we didn't have listeners to that music, right, then they wouldn't be there. But, like, right. I, why? It's a lot of people that like to see that. I guess that's what it is. Well, it's, I, it's, I it's, had a situation. People once, like Blood on the Coliseum floor. Where there was a rapper who I was trying to rap with, but he didn't, he didn't want to rap. And he kept putting it out in the public that he wasn't trying to rap. 
I had to see him in the streets. So eventually, I got the message. I stopped making records, and I saw him in the streets. And things got nasty, and it's unnecessary. It, is it was unnecessary. so unnecessary. I almost threw away my life did over, you, did, over somebody just doing interviews and speaking like that's what he wanted. Did he feel the same way you felt? About what? About that whole, like, you, you didn't have to go that route. I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. I never really talked to him. However, that. I don't think he realized that you kept asking for this route. You kept asking for it. You kept saying, this is what you do. This is what happens to people. You kept putting that out there. And when you keep putting out that energy, sometimes it comes to meet you. It's not, it's not good. Even, even I've been on the receiving end sometimes putting out that type of energy. Yep. It's, not, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. Let's keep it rap. Let's keep it rap. Let's just keep it rap. Ah, Miss Noel, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm, look at me. Look, I'm, I'm, look where I'm at. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yo, when, I'm so glad Jen is here. Let when, me just um, say that. A Thank friend you. of mine, I went out with one night and things got a little crazy. And, you know, by the end of the night, you know, he, he was putting his bat back in the trunk and driving me home. And he was like, yo, <laughs> you need some help, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong. Like, Something's you know what I mean? Wrong. You're cool. You're a great guy, but something's wrong. And then he introduced me to you. And you helped me. Shout out to Seth. Shout out to Seth. Shout out to Seth. That's the homie. Yeah. Um, I, wish I, I wish I could have seen him tonight. Yeah, I know. Let me just say that. Right. But yeah. And let me, <laughs> and let me say this. Uh-huh. I didn't even take Seth seriously. The minute, let me, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, he reached out to me and was like, oh, there's somebody that I need you to help. And he was like, Math Hoff, I didn't know who you were. I'm sorry. It's I know okay. I know now though. It's okay, yeah. Hey. I know now. Yeah. You, you realized that when I you came feel- to Fox. Yes. When yes. you was up in that Fox <laughs> studio, studio looking around at the camera, you just like, oh, this is who oh, I want. I want to give you a Bible this verse. I, think, yeah, yeah. Bro, I, wanna, I got it. I give you a Bible it. verse that yeah. I think it'd be important so, if you listen to it. It, it, it says, Why should a fool have money in his hand to buy wisdom when he has no sense? So just walk, you know, it's in the a, way you know. It's a preaching session. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. like, I, I, I commend you because, like, you know what he's saying? You know, it can go life like that. So I'm glad that you really got, you know, the music on your mind more than, you know, what can go left. And I think it's better to be war more wise knowing that it could get ugly, especially you being from the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. So, check, check. Give me a second. Let me, let me, <laughs> let me handle this. Um, you were saying... So you didn't take it seriously. I didn't take it seriously. Yes. Right. Cause yeah, cause he mentioned in the same breath, you know, he's a battle rapper, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, you know, you know what I do? They don't usually take this seriously. Mm-hmm. So I literally just like, okay, I'm not. He's like, call him. I said no. He, give me. Here's my number. If he, you know, he could reach out to me, and we'll we'll see. But he has to put in the work. Mm. And then. 15 minutes later, I think you called almost immediately. Mm, right. That's why I knew something was wrong. Right. I was like, damn, <laughs> I just got off. <laughs> Things was falling apart. Yeah. I was living in the projects. Yeah. Um, my daughter was still missing. Mm. I was going through it with my current kid's mother. And things was just in shambles. It was. And then we spoke on the phone. You gave me these exercises, which I advise everyone to get the book. Um, work on yourself. You yeah. know what I mean? We, we, got, we got a room full of people that I feel like have reached a certain level of success, <laughs> not only in their... Oh, wow. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Wow. 30 days <laughs> to a new you. This is your journal. Now, do you write in this journal? Yes. It's a writing journal. And it, there's also exercises and, and so stuff. Inside. It's a technique. Oh, yes. Yeah, do you so have more of these on you? I don't have it on oh, me. But you can order. Sorry. Is it on I Amazon? Amazon? I'm Russian. 
But oh. you could just please, yeah, I'll, 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 I could ship it to oh, you. Man, I was rushing and I did not bring them. That looks right. great. I would Let's love blame that. Dwayne for that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> right. I forgot. I forgot. Right. This is his sister's copy. I act, I asked him to That's bring amazing. it, but oh my god, I right. will ship some more. Yo, it, yo, it comes, it comes in a it suede comes in bag. A velvet, yeah. Oh, it's velvet. It comes in a velvet Why bag. Why did you bring yours? Fire. I, I, I'm just, yeah, I, I figured. I yeah. would love that book. Yeah, but I do have extra copies of my other book that I will give. I will. I like to give the yellow weed. The yellow weed. You she would was, love. She was this. writing this book. You as, absolutely would. As this. she was. Uh, you too. Working with. You're me. very spiritual. But here, Matt, you could give this to whoever. I bought it as gifts, um, for everyone else. That's my first book. But this journaling process, the 30 days to a new you journaling process, is actually the technique that I use on Matt because this is three years ago. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I would just say, get a journal and then do these things every day um, while I'm coaching him because right. it's so important. The, the purpose of this journal is to help you develop self-awareness, which is what we talk about, which is so important. Mm -hmm. right. Master discipline, as well as retrain your thoughts back on the path of positivity right. because that's so important. And when I started talking to Matt, I, well, can I also tell you this? I don't think you know this. I purposely would meet with you. I would give you times like early in the morning because I know you wasn't dedicated. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> I would say all I have is 9.30 a.m. or 10 o'clock a.m., but you was up. Right. You was. I was dedicated you to was, the change. You was, you was actually, uh, to be honest with you, more dedicated than... Most of the people I've coached, um, which you shocked me because mm -hmm. you really and truly wanted change in your life. Uh, you almost gave up on me a couple times. I almost gave up. <laughs> a couple times, I'd be like, Sean, last night, like, man, you know, I was at the bar and then I was like, oh, uh, you you'd be like, honest. what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing with yourself? Because you was brutally honest. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, oh, my God, we're not getting anywhere. Like, why are you still going through, you know, these right. things? And then something clicked. Um, so this is the process, actually, everyone, I want that, that I put Matt through. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying you're going to be transformed in 30 days. Absolutely not. It took about a good eight months yeah. for, for Matt to finally, like, start to walk in this positive mode that he was on every single day, seeing the good and everything that was happening in his lives, being able to connect dots. It takes time. Right. But what this does is really get you started where you now start to get excited about the changes. You see little things happening. You're, you're getting confirmation and you want to continue right. and you get used to a routine. And yeah. I, you know, you can't tell somebody if I could say one year, no one would buy this book. I have to say 30 days. But my hopes is that you really and truly continue the process because that's what changed me to be able to do what I'm doing, to be able to coach and talk to people and assist people and change lives like I do. And I don't think I'm changing lives until I hear testimonies, <laughs> like, no, it, you know, it, from the, Matt where he's like, you changed my life. And I'm there like, were I things did. that she told me to focus on in the beginning. Yeah. And following these routines, I started to see them. Things that I thought was impossible. impossible. My daughter was out of my life for nine years. I didn't know where her mother is. She's a, she's a master at, at hiding. She, if I broke down to you like who she is and the type of people that she grew up around, you'd be like, oh, wow, that's crazy. And I remember doing these practices and writing, saying that my daughter would be back in my life. Mm keeping my mind focused on certain things, clearing out the space. Because that's, that's something that a lot of us don't do. We don't clear the space for the things that we want. We say, I want this, and then we keep a whole bunch of junk in front of us. You say, ah, I want a great woman, but then you, you know, you're messing with chicks that you know is not great women. You know what I mean? Like, you, you're just keeping that space cluttered. Mm -hmm. She showed me how to clear that space and to look for these things. And my daughter's 11th birthday, phone call. Wow. Amen. I'm happy to hear that. Right, brother. I'm proud of you. Oh my God. I'm proud of you. Wow, love you, baby. No, you kept saying I can't. It's impossible, you know. Yeah, in he the beginning, saying, that's what I was yeah, saying. I was, was like, like, it's impossible. Nah, it's not gonna that's happen. not gonna happen. The, you know, you kept like saying it's not gonna happen for you. 
And look at that. Look at God. You want to tell you what changed my life? What? Amazon, I just bought your book. You bought the book? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is on Amazon. Yeah, that's, what's up. Up. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. It is but on Amazon. I'm going to tell, is... tell you why. Because like when I was like, my first million dollar check came and I was like, I, you know, am I losing my mind? Right. Because I started seeing so much stuff yeah, around me yeah. that I started journaling it. But I was writing things in the, in the book that was like what I was seeing around me happen. Like it was like demonic. Right. And I felt like I had to go talk to a therapist. And I sat down to the therapist the first session. My wife actually, we was having some issues then at the time. And I was like, she thought I was going there to like work on our issue. But it was like really going there to work on my issue. I said, man, I'm seeing all this crazy stuff around me. And I'm reading this in this book. And he, I remember him sitting there for one hour. And I read him all that, what I had in the journal, I remember him doing this. Okay, Mr. Peter, your time is up. He said, <laughs> that's what he said. He said, I want to, and he stood up to me like this. He said, I want to let you know the battle is real, but so is the victory. Mm. And from that point on right there, that, that victory thing kept coming up to the point where I know now. I mean, still, I still speak to him to this day. It's like, yeah. it's, it's so crazy. People will say, you know. Yeah, well, you don't need to be seeing a therapist or nothing like that. But, like, yo, I just look at it like the conversations I have that I like to have, right. I got to pay people to talk to me like that because it's, like, it's, it's too deep, you know? Well, for, that's a funny thing because the first time we met, we ended up having a long conversation like that. Yes. And that kind of brought made this happen. Yes. Well, you know, I've been called by God. That's, that's flat out. Mm -hmm. So, like, you don't really... Um, like it's every it's every religion cool to be you you be a good you be a cool looking Muslim right. but nobody ever think about like a Christian like a person that believe in Christ they kind of make it look like um, not cool and I'm mm -hmm. saying you know I feel like he was cool he, you know he, he he was in the hood you know yeah. what I'm saying so if it's anywhere that's where where the most help needed so you know I felt like my purpose and my, my mission is like. You know, especially for black people right now, it's like what I what I teach. Even though I'm married to a Jewish chick, my my wife, my my wife is Jewish. She mm -hmm. works for the Today Show on NBC. Mm -hmm. My dad is born and raised in Cuba, wow. so my dad is Cuban. My mom is from the South Side of Chicago. I was born in Chicago, Illinois. But like, if if I if I would tell you honestly, I grew up with maybe having identity problems and maybe mm -hmm. how I, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. look at myself. I had issues with my mother, so I treated. Let me tell you that straight up, I hate to say it this way. Every time I, I met a girl and she remind me of my mother, it's like, I can't do it no more. I can't do it. She wow. started asking for stuff or like she needs something. I'm like, I can't do it. Right. So I, I got to the point when one day I lived on, I was living right there in Fort Green, all, in the Avalon on Myrtle and, and Flatbush mm -hmm. and 42nd floor. And I was just dealing with a lot of stuff and people was just throwing stuff at me all the time. Right. And I told myself this. I said, what can make all those words go away? And I looked out the window. I said, jump out the window. Oh, wow. Damn. wow. And I said, I said, and I said this. I said, what about if you change your mind? You know what I said? Sure. No, brother, it's going to take about six feet, six, six seconds before you hit the ground. And by the time you think about changing your mind, it's going to be too late already. And that's when I really started to feel like I needed to talk to somebody. And I really felt like nobody ever am, admit that me talking to myself, that's like suicidal thoughts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had to face those. And wow. I'm thankful I knew what the victory was. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's and that's why you see, you know, what he said. I don't know if you remember this, where I went directly to your childhood. That was my first question. Tell yeah. me about your childhood. And I think the question was simple. I was just like, how would you describe your childhood? And you told me all things negative. Mm. You didn't focus immediately on the yeah. positives. You talked about the negative things in your childhood. Those were the things that were echoing. Right. 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 And, that, and that's what it is. That's the decluttering process. That's, that's why it's so important for us to go back and look at that. Because at the end of the day, that is exactly what we're using to navigate our adult life right now is our experiences from our childhood. So I'm not your like typical coach, whereas, you know, I don't just give you boxes to check. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> right, right. No, it, it's, it's very important for you to really... That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> See, I got bars, She did a callback. I got she bars, did a call back. <laughs> She did a callback. That's crazy. Right. Right. I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> no, yeah, it, it's so important for us to really go back and, and really start to connect the dots of our lives because we'll realize that everything means something and everything that we've gone through is, is a tool that you needed to get to the where you are right now that's going to help you on the journey that you're on right now. Right. And if we started to look at things that way, which is you changed your mind, that's, that's part of it, You us changing our mind about how we feel about what we went through or what happened to us in the past is exactly what's going to change your life and how things are going for you. Boy, that's right. You know how I changed my mind? How? Because repent means change. Yes. So I changed mm. my mind by repenting. Repentance. And now, right, it's that I got joy, but it used to be pain. I used to use God's name in vain. Then I sat back and thought about those raining flames, and that's the reason why I came to change. Mm. Mm. The Lord, the reason why I gave my faith, we all say through amazing grace. Before I eat, yeah, it says my grace. For a place in the kingdom, yeah, I paid my way. Mm. Now I know God hears when I pray. Mm. Bars. 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 Amazing things happen on this show, man. Amazing things happen on this show. I want to say, uh, Mickey, is there a Rafe 2 coming? No, only if Royce responds. I, so have, you, you, I don't you, have nothing ready. So just, you don't think you should bomb first? No, no, no. I'm not bombing first. Uh, it's like I told the champ. I'm, I'm, I'm in a defensive stance. Right. I'm reactionary. There's no need for me to antagonize him and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and beat a man while he's down. Right. Uh, give him the chance to get up and swing first. Right. You know, <laughs> what you do. You Make you told me something today. You said, bro, you one thought from losing your mind. You don't be careful. People might push you in mental illness. They push you there, brother. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, and, and let me tell you, let me tell you what, what, tell you what you happened, there. though. That It happens like that because everybody waiting for your response. I think you should look yourself in the mirror, be thankful for who you are. I think you talk to I, I discovered you off of Smack DVD, brother. I've you know never been on Smack DVD, though. No, oh. the battles. Oh, oh, the battles. Oh. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Apologies. You know. My, again, like what I'm saying, I'm good. I'm good, bro. I'm, I'm fine, man. I got a project coming out with Blue and Knots. It's coming out August 20th. It's called The Narrative. The Narrative. Please pick that up. You know what I'm saying? Stay Down is out right now. Rain with Asheroff is on it. Thank you, guys. I have no Wraith 2. <laughs> That's what's up. But if he, if he, if he drops... I, it, listen, I'm all for the competitiveness. So, we back. Royce... Love to you, bro. Love to you, bro. Love to you. Love you to already you. know what it you is. Already know, right? You already know. You already know. Yeah, yeah. We ain't got so. Sean Bigger. All about Jesus. That's the only solution to anything. Praise Amen. God. Stay dangerous. Yes. Keep that in the forefront of your mind. Mm -hmm. It's all about Jesus. Moody. TaylorMadeLifestyle.com. Tap in. That's it. TaylorMadeLifestyle.com. Tap in. Follow me on the gram. TaylorMadeLifestyle.com. I want to say shout out. To my lady, <laughs> she made her debut her on hat. Amazon. You heard? Your you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she got some film work out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> you want to? Go ahead, Jen. Yes. Go ahead, yes, Jen. yes. Yes. Good. <laughs> speak up. Come speak, on. Speak, come on. Speak, speak up. Do it. Do it. Do it, man. Do it. <laughs> The name, you know, the name. What's the name of the, yeah. <laughs> Secret Society. Secret okay. Society. Okay. 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 Oh, we oh, yes. just trust, trust you, you her. Yes, it's a sci-fi series. Um, I do play the main, one of the main Oh, oh nice. my God. Yes. Oh, God. yes. Wow, that's my favorite. Yeah. That man is proud. Look at his smile. Well, I like this one, and you know, we have some other stuff in the works that, um, you know, I'll be putting out there soon, so, you know. But check it out. Check it out. Yes. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Baby, y'all.
Yo, I just want to say, I've seen a bunch of my expert opinion episodes, and this right here is one of the most powerful ones. You know what I mean? According to everybody that I've, not just because I'm here, but that I've watched. You know what right. I'm saying? So, Salute. Salute. Be on Easy Out Now, <laughs> After Grace Out Now, Peace and Love. What? It's Website. You. Oh, sorry. Plug, plug everything. Plug <laughs> everything. Up. I didn't know what you was doing. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> they're there with him. They're oh, part of the star entourage. <laughs> yes. So my Thirty Days to a New You journal is actually on Amazon, but you could also find it Thirty Days to a New You Journal dot com, mm-hmm. and that's the where you could act, get the velvet case. Amazon will not give you the velvet case. I'll make sure you get one. I'll send it to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so 30 days to a new you journal.com, Amazon, 30 days to a new you journal. Awesome. The process. The process. Trust the process. Trust the process. You heard? Ah, oh, check. I right, that's first and foremost, let's give Matt a big round of applause. Woo! Oh, wow. Yeah. All right, Jack. All right. All right. I'll tell you why I think it's very important that you you talked about you covered a lot of stuff. You cover what you do, your craft, your hip hop, but you cover mental illness. A lot of people are struggling with that. Um, I want to thank y'all for allowing me to be here and grace all y'all presence. Y'all was a blessing to me today. I've been up since five. Now I don't feel like I need to get. One ounce of sleep, yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. I'm going to take you wait, up wait. on your offer. I just bought the book. I'm going to take it as something I need to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the journal about my life. Yeah. I do have a movie that I've done. It's called Bleed for This. I'm going to tell this. you how I got the movie. I was training Shia LaBeouf downtown Manhattan. He said, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf. He goes, yeah. you ever thought about acting? <laughs> I said, yeah. Shit, I act like I know what I'm doing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that. Got me a role. I like that. Right. Right? Oh wow! And I got a Netflix documentary. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a original. Dope. Um, the verse that you just heard, I'm gonna put out a gospel album. Yeah. You know, but not to be a rapper. I respect mm. everybody's craft, and I hear y'all talking about like, um, I would be in in too many fights if I was. I, I <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna respect it for what it is, but I honestly want to be somebody that write a book. I want to write my own biography. Yeah. I yes. feel very caught, and I got a lot of wisdom in me. And, and my my and line, you're in the right circle right now. Yeah, man. Yeah. And yeah. I'm in line like anytime, brother. Like, like I'm already feel like I told her what was my name. I said brother Pete. Brother Pete. That's, right. that's like everybody like calling me Chick- Kid Chocolate, but I'm your brother. I'm your brother. You know. Mm-hmm. I'm here. I feel like I'm, I'm being risen up to be a leader for what, what God has allowed me to do. So I hope this conversation was aligned for everybody that was here. Yeah. Salute, salute. And we out. This hot fuck. Trap, trapper turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth, you heard. Got your baby mama thirst, you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the wave you need to surf, you heard. Go to gym, I need a bomb, I could drop on you niggas. Bad boy, I'm never gonna stop for you niggas. I don't give a fuck who you got as the illest. I solidify my spot with gorillas. 